Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Friends, join me in an attitude of prayer as we hear the invocation. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes, ears, hearts, and the very lives of your presence so that today we may worship and serve you in faithfulness, be blessing and healing reminders of your love to all whose lives we touch. We offer our prayers in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, as we continue in our Lenten journey, our theme is the cost of discipleship. And we've been wrestling with that theme in many different ways. I encourage you to open yourself to what that may mean in your life. Our theme psalm has been Psalm 25. Today we'll pick up in verse 8. The Lord is good and does the right thing. He teaches sinners which way they should go. God guides the weak to justice, teaching them his way. All the Lord's paths are loving and faithful, for those who keep his covenants and laws, please, for the sake of your good name, Lord, forgive my sins, which are money. God bless the reading of the psalm. Again, this kind of contrite heart that, that seeks to understand a God who moves things towards justice, who moves things towards love. And again, that's where our hope is. And it's not in... Uh, it, it, there, there are some Christians and some religious sects that it's like, well, the, humanity's evil, the earth is evil, and we're just going to wait it out and God's going to come fix everything. And, and that's not how I see the, the timeline of human history and creation. I, I see the bend towards goodness and justice and love. But we are participants in that. And I think if we all sit back and, and wait for it to happen, it's going to be real rough. As opposed to that, that turn little by little by little, challenging things that are not okay. And we've seen this in human history. It, it doesn't seem like it always in our context. Because we see the world through very short, we, we see history and creation through very short lenses. We we are only alive for it. We're just a we're we're just a blip on on the map of human history, let alone the history of the cosmos. But if you look over the course of human history, haven't some things changed for good? Can can you honestly say to yourself that? Oh yeah. I mean, things, things 4,000 years ago were so much better. Things 2,000 years ago were so much better. Things 100 years ago were so much better. Do, do you honestly believe that? I don't, because I've read history. <laughs> like, I, things were not so good even 100 years ago, even 50 years ago. There were some problems that we don't have today. And I, I know, again, in, in our tiny context, we, we like to lament how things are different and that means they are bad. And there are some things that may seem worse and may be worse for a time period. But over the course of history, even over the course of the last couple hundred years, we've made some progress towards justice, towards love it's good. Don't, don't be blind to that. Don't give that up. doesn't mean we're done. We got a lot to do. And again, we've erred towards some things we need to come back towards. But many of the evils that exist today have always existed. I think some of the good news is we're starting to recognize them. Because as Christ says, everything that is in darkness will be exposed by the light. Our anthology reading today comes from uh, Charles Kinsey, The Contemplative Review. This is from fall 1981. Excellent year. Excellent vintage. Uh, this is from the incarnation of Thomas Merton. Perhaps the peculiar mark of the modern saint is that he or she faces the crisis 
the crisis that forms our existence, in his own or her own life, and therefore driven at least by the desire to experience Christianity in a pristine form, beyond the decaying cultural forms that no longer serve to bring us to conversion. There is about such a life a minimum of self-betrayal. Hmm. This crisis, <laughs> this crisis, interesting, Th this crisis of desiring, and, 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 and uh, maybe you've experienced this too, I desire an authentic expression of Christianity. I, uh, an authentic expression of church. And I, 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 and again, I don't want to get into the sense of, oh, well, when, when I was a little boy, the church was so much better. Or back in the 50s, the church was so much better. I, I don't believe that because I believe if it was so good, it would be even better today. That's how the church generally works. Even the early church, the Acts 2 church, which we talk about often, I love that passage. Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47. Start reading Acts chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. You start seeing some problems pretty quick. It's just human condition stuff. But there's that desire. We, we want something better. We want something authentic. We want something whole. And, and I've seen it. And that's why I want it so bad. That's why I want it so because I've seen it. In, in just little little glimpses and, and little experiences, I've, I've seen moments where the church has truly been the church. And I'm like, yes, let's do that all the time. <laughs> uh, and, and then we mess up and fight and our bureaucracy gets in the way. That's what we're dealing with right now in, in the bigger picture. We, we start we start fighting and, and, and saying, this is my, this is like, but at the same time, I, I see glimpses of hope. I see amazing things happening in the church I serve, and I'm so blessed to be part of that. I I, I sat around a table a couple of weeks ago with with uh, clergy from all over uh, my town, from different traditions, traditions that are diametrically opposed in history, <laughs> Roman church and Greek church sitting at the same table, different types of Lutherans. If you're Lutheran, you know, they don't always mesh real well. Different types of Lutherans diametrically opposed theologically and traditionally sitting at the table. Some of those non-denominational folks and, and folks that have lineages that are kind of outside the traditional denominational and then Protestants in there in the mix and traditional Protestants, us as well. And, and we were sitting around a table sharing about mission and ministry, praying for and encouraging each other, envisioning for how we can do ministry in our community together because there's plenty of room in all our churches for people. And the different expressions of faith we have don't have to be opposed to each other. We don't have to fight each other. We can work together because there's plenty like if everyone in New Lenox, and we serve a much larger area than New Lenox, but if everyone in New Lenox was in church, we wouldn't have enough churches for everyone. Like, you understand that. We'd all have to have 17 services. <laughs> like, we could have more churches. So we're, there's, there's no reason for to be in competition. We can all do what we do well. And people can find community and expressions of community within each of our churches. And we can do work together. And we would be so mighty if we could really do it. And I got hope that maybe we can. I see the signs. But you'll often be disappointed. <laughs> and that's the crisis. That's the cost of discipleship. Is having that grand hope, that, that idealistic hope, because that's where we're going. And yet living in the disappointment of reality and being okay with it. Because we know at the end of the day, what we're doing matters. And at the end of the day, love truly does win. Our scripture reading today comes from, we're back in John. Yeah, John 15. And we're going to pick up in verse 12. This is my commandment. Love each other 
as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to give up one's life for a friend's. You are my friends if you do what I command. I don't call you servants, because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because everything I heard from my Father I've made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit, and that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so you can love one another. If the world hates you, Noah hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love you. However, I've chosen you out of the world, and you don't belong to the world. This is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, servants aren't greater than their master? If the world harassed me, it will harass you. If it kept my word, it also keeps it will also keep yours. The world will do these things to you on account of my name, because it doesn't know the one who sent me. If I haven't come and spoken to the people of this world, they wouldn't be sinners. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me also hates the Father. If I hadn't done works among them that no one else had done, they wouldn't be sinners. But now they have seen and hated both me and the Father. This fulfills the written in the word written in their law. They hated me without a reason. When the companion comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You will testify too, because you have been with me from the beginning. God bless the reading of the scripture today. Uh, again, Jesus is speaking and looking forward to the the life of the disciples who were around that table, around that discussion. Uh, but he's also speaking to us. This great command that we love one another it is the foundation of our faith. Love one another as Christ has loved us, giving his full self to us. Therefore, love for others is giving our full self to each other. And the world may not always like that. Why wouldn't the world like love? Again, look in recent history, the last hundred years, 200 years. There are examples of great men and women, people of great faith and power who stood on love and were killed because of it. Because love means everyone matters. Love means everyone deserves some kind of dignity. Love means that we should care about each other. And, and there are forces in the world that don't want that to be the case. And so they try to silence love as much as possible. The evil in our world works against those things. And we shouldn't be blind to it. We should see and learn. And keep standing up, and that's the good news. People keep standing up. And yeah, sometimes we're mistaken, and yeah, sometimes we miss the mark. I'd rather have us screw up and ask for forgiveness if it's, if it's coming from a place of love, not, not the violence, not hatred. Those, those things are completely in contradiction to what Jesus is talking about. But, but I'd rather try, you know, those of, sometimes we've made mistakes in trying to do good work. Uh, we, we've, we've, we've done help, uh, and, and that's done harm, and, and we need to always be aware of that. That's why do no harm is our first rule. Uh, but I'd rather us try to help and try to love and stand up for what is good than, than not do it at all. Even if, if we fail, even if we make mistakes along the way, we can ask for forgiveness. We talk about that in our church all the time. We're going to step on each other's toes. We're going to make mistakes, but we can forgive each other, reconcile, and work together. Through conflict, often wonderful things grow. Encourage you. Love each other. Do not be afraid to stand up against what maybe the world is saying so that love will be heard, that Christ will be heard. Friends, today we come with our petitions. It's okay to ask God for what you need, for what your heart is desiring, longing for. Spend a moment of silence, requesting what your heart truly needs. And if you don't know, requesting the wisdom and strength to realize what deep inside your heart is truly longing for.
Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.